Hi everyone, welcome to Spinelli Speaks. I'm Danny, and today I would like to tell you a little bit about how I review books. So as most of us are, we are on Goodreads and they have a five star uh, reviewing system. And they kind of put it into really like, like, dislike. Uh, I kind of go one step further and make a little bit of notes um, on my own rating. So like a five star rating to me uh, would be awesome. Nothing bad to say about the book. Um, four for me is great, but maybe one thing bothered me about it. Uh, three is good, didn't thrill me, but it didn't upset me. Didn't love it, didn't hate it kind of thing. Uh, for two, I'd say that's fair. Um, could have been better, but wasn't great. And then one, poor. Not a great book. Writing style was poor. Storyline was poor. Um, but within those ratings, I kind of take a look at a couple of different things. So being an academic myself, I really enjoy books that have a really great writing style. And what I mean by that is the writer really took the time to put all the pieces together into a way of which the reader can really be absorbed into that book um, and not get lost at any point of time. Um, so, for instance, if a book gets really great off the bat but then kind of fizzles towards the middle, that writing style needs a little bit of work. Or if it takes a hundred pages to get into the real meat of the story, that kind of bothers me too. That's a lot of pages to read to get into what is really happening in the book. So um, for me, writing style is a big piece of it. Also, I don't like to be confused when I'm reading. Now, there are some novels that you're, the reader is meant to be confused. The reader is meant to have um, questions about an unreliable character. And that can be done very well. Um, however, when it's not done well, it makes the reader very confused and sometimes makes them stop reading the book. So um, good writing style, good um, writing in general really make or break uh, a good rating for me, um, whether it be a five or a one star. Another thing that really um, goes into the ratings is if I like it or not. Uh, we all have our own opinions. We all like certain genres um, more than others. So for me, when it comes to rating, it, it comes down to the fact of, did I like it? Was it something I would read again? Is it something that I would want to buy and put on my shelf? Um, so that really plays a part. And then um, the last thing that I, I look into as well is, did it all flow together? And that kind of goes with the writing style. So. Sometimes what I have is I might not like a book, might not like it at all, uh, might not be the kind of thing that I like to read, it might have been maybe too graphic or um, the storyline wasn't somewhere I liked it to go, but it had good uh, bones, it had good writing style, it had good characters, I would still rate that a little bit higher. Just because it's not my cup of tea doesn't mean that someone else that does like that uh, wouldn't like it because of the same things I do. So I don't base my ratings solely on if I like it or not. It really, it's all of those three things that I mentioned put together. Because like I said, if people are looking at the ratings that I'm giving, I would like them to be able to be unbiased in the sense that if it had good writing style, it had good bones, it had good characters, they were developed, they were um, well done, then of course I'm going to give it a little bit of a higher rating. I might not give it a five star rating because I might not like it all together, but I would definitely still give it a higher rating because of the work that was put into it. And other people may actually like that. So what I'd like to do today is actually talk about five books that I've read in the most recent past um, that I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how I would rate them and why I rated them the way I did. So the first book that I wanted to kind of give you an idea about um, is one of my favorite authors. I love his books and I typically will rate him in the five to four range depending on the book and that is Mitch Albom. And I've read a couple of his books. I've read Tuesdays with Maury as well as For One More Day. And then I own a couple of his other books and they're definitely on my um, TBR future lists. Um, but most recently I read The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And you yourself may have read this. It's been out for quite some time. Um, I think if we look inside here, uh, it was published. Let me take a look for you. And it looks 2003, so quite some time. Um, but I really enjoyed this book. And I think what, what is nice about this book is that any reader could find some kind of value in this book. And what's nice is even though it's 
staged in heaven, I wouldn't say that it really speaks too much in the spirituality or religious aspect. It really just kind of gives an idea of what someone's version of heaven could be. And for this particular book, the character that we follow um, has passed away. And we don't yet know exactly what happened, um, but we know that he has made it to heaven and he meets five different people uh, that have touched his life in some way. And some of those people he didn't know even existed, um, but they touched him in some way, um, whether that be um, full, full on or through passing. So he gets kind of a lesson from each of those people. And it really kind of develops in such a way that it lets you kind of ponder your own life and how different things that you may have done could have affected other people's lives. So for me, this book was really eye-opening as well as kind of one of those books you ponder and I feel like you could come back to in different parts of your life and find different value points depending on where you are in your life. So this was a very good book. Um, I believe I rated it a five. I was able to read it all in one sitting um, on the way to Ohio which is about six hours away from me. Uh, and really enjoyed it. Um, there's comical pieces, there's very sad pieces, but overall a very, very good book. So I believe I would give this a five. The next book that I uh, read this past year is a nonfiction book. Uh, I tend to read one or two nonfiction books a year. I'd like to make it more um, because I do like learning and I feel like you can learn a lot. But when I read nonfiction books, I tend to read books that are about um, people, not so much points in time or historical events. So I typically find like maybe a celebrity or um, a historical figure that I really, you know, gravitate it towards in uh, maybe the things that they've done or uh, the areas they've come from. Um, so I'll tend to read about them more so than, you know, about something um, or about a certain event. So the book that I read was uh, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. If you haven't read this, highly recommend. I would also have given this book a five. Um, and if you don't know Trevor Noah, he is a comedian who actually has a show, The Daily Show, on Comedy Central. He um, currently is the host of that very, very funny comedian. He's done stand-up as well. He is from South Africa. And the reason why his book is called Born a Crime is because in South Africa, um, they, um, in the time that he was born, still were abiding by the law of um, apartheid, which means that there was segregation between um, the African black people and then the South African white people. And his mother was African, a black person, um, and then his father was actually Swiss German, so a white person, and that was actually a crime at that time. So he reflects on his upbringing and how he grew up with his mother, and in um, playing with even the cousins, he had to play in the backyard so he wasn't seen in the front yard, as their skin color was a much darker than his. Um, so it kind of goes through that, it goes through his teens, you know, the maybe trouble he is, had gone into, um, the different languages he learned to be a part of something. He felt very much outside of everyone because he didn't feel like he actually fit anywhere. Um, and it talks about his relationship with um, religion, his relationship with his mother. I think this book was very well written. Um, it was very comical as well as knowledgeable. He really had a great way of putting the information in the story without sounding like a, a preacher. He really kind of laid it out like as if he were telling you around a campfire. He was telling you his story and the importance of what had happened to him and what had happened to others in that area. And um, I, I loved this book. It would definitely be something that I would um, come back to reread. I do believe he has another book out 
Um, and I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he does. Um, and it's just, he, he's a great writer. I really enjoyed this a lot. He has a lot of really great things to say. He's been doing a lot of great things um, around the world. And I, I just really appreciate that. So I would give this five stars. And again, that's Trevor Noah, Born a Crime. The next book is Fiction. And it is um, a book that I read in a book club that I'm in. And actually, actually, most of these books I read in book club, except for one, it looks like. I have a book club on Facebook that has a few family and friends that we read books um, throughout the year from, the, from January to October. So we just finished. Um, and now we're actually trying to figure out what we're going to be reading in 2020. So... We started that poll today, so I'm kind of excited to see what we'll be reading. Um, but this book we read, and everyone really enjoyed it, which is great. Um, it's always nice when everyone has a good time reading the book as opposed to no one really liking it. But um, that book is A Man Called Uwe. And this is written by Frederick Backman, which, um, again, this book was very popular. And Backman has a ton of different books out there on the market right now. I currently own Brit Marie Was Here, which I um, started reading and then ended up um, reading some other books. So I haven't gotten too far into it. But very similarly, uh, great writing style, uh, great characters, very whole characters, which I really like. Um, but Uwe is a story about a man who doesn't really have the desire to live anymore. He feels like he's lived his life um, and he, he wants it to be done. Uh, his wife recently passed away and he tries to find ways to end his life um, and fails each time by, by varying reasons. Uh, a new family moves in on the block and uh, he befriends the wife um, very stubbornly so. He's a very stubborn character and what you see is you see his life as a child um, into his teens and early 20s when he meets his wife and their life together as well as um, in the current time when he is befriending uh, this family. And it really is a great story about friendship, about love, about relationships, and really just the dynamic that you can build between people. Um, even though you're not related, you can really call somebody family. And I think that um, that was a huge piece of this, this book. Beautifully written. I thought all of the characters were so unique. Even the children, there were children in the book. And they were so well-rounded and, and were so significant to certain things that would happen between them and Uwe that it really just, it was, it was cute. And um, it really made you think about the people around you and how they affect you and how the desire to live can really be a part of the people who are around you. So um, I really like this book. I really like this author. Um, I do plan on reading his other stories. I believe he has a compilation of short stories that is called um, Your Grandmother Told Me to Tell You She's Sorry, I think is what it's called. I'd have to look that up. I'll, I'll link it below um, or I'll, I'll put it in the description below once I see it. But I also, um, for my book club for this next year, I uh, recommended that we read Bear Town, which is also by Backman. And I think it's about a hockey team. I'm not sure. Um, but very, very good book, very good writer. I would give this a five as well. This next book is actually the third in a series, and I was actually recommended uh, this series by one of my um, friends in book club. I had never heard of the author before, and uh, we were reading something about witches, and my uh, friend recommended me the All Souls trilogy, which is by um, Deborah Harkness. And so what I have here is the third book, which is The Book of Life, uh, which is, oh my gosh, I love this series so much. Um, they're pretty good sized books and they're all very large. I could not stop reading them. They were so amazing. Um, if you have um, AMC, or BBC, they just made uh, this into a series on, um, and it's called uh, Discovery of Witches, which is the title of the very first book. And I gotta tell you, not a fan of the show. By itself, it's okay. <laughs> but the books are just 
gripping and there's so much detail. Uh, the author um, in the first book you kind of get a good understanding of, of the premise. It's about witches and vampires and demons and and all that kind of thing living in the modern day and how they interact together and then uh, equally with humans and the secrets and the secret societies and all of that and then in the second book spoiler alert they time travel back in time to try to to figure something out and that book is so spot on in the historical value of every little detail I mean down to the the wardrobe and and the the foods and the smells and the I mean she really just dives right into it and and gives you all of the explanation I mean there's full chapters of just explaining the the atmosphere and to me that is just that is what authors need to focus on is building a world for us that we can imagine ourselves in that is right on target to what they're what they're trying to explain. If they're saying they're going to 1500, you know, London, then you need to figure out what 1500 London looks like and smells like and and how the people are and the illnesses and I mean and and Deborah Harkness puts it all in there. Um, this again, The Book of Life is the final in the trilogy, the All Souls trilogy, and it's very well done. Um, this one is kind of the pinnacle. Um, it all comes down to this as far as um, finding out um, bloodlines and whatnot. And I don't want to give too much away because the books are amazing. She just came out with a um, another book that kind of goes after the Book of Life, which is called The Times Convert. Um, and it kind of goes off of two characters that are in this book. You still see all of the original characters, but it's more based on these two. And I don't want to give too much away again, because I'm, I'm really far um, into the series. So if you haven't started this, um, the first is um, uh, The Discovery of Witches. Just amazing. Um, so uh, definitely love this. I gave them all five stars. I, I will definitely be reading them in the future. I found this at Half Price Books and, and picked it up, so I'm just looking for the other two. Um, I actually borrowed all of the, the three from the library, so um, I definitely highly recommend that book. The last book um, that I'm going to show you is a young adult book, um, and if you can kind of see in the five books that I have here, they're all kind of different genres. Um, so you can see that I kind of read a little bit of everything. So with Mitch Albom, you know, contemporary uh, fiction, we have your um, nonfiction books with the Trevor Noah book. Uh, we also have another contemporary um, and that's actually uh, a book that's, I believe it's based in Sweden or Finland. It's, um, and that's, I'm talking about the, a man called Ove. And that actually had a film uh, with subtitles. So I, I, I believe it was Swedish. I want to say it was Swedish. Beautiful film. And they did a very nice job of adapting it from the book to the film. I think they did an excellent job. It really came together. I don't feel like they compromised the book excuse me, by any means. And um, I do believe they're also creating that. They're, they're making a, an American version. Um, I want to say that that's happening. So I'd be interested to see if, if they do as well as the original film because I, I really thought that they did a nice job of that. And then with the Book of Life, I read fantasy novels as well. And then with this uh, last book, I do also read uh, young adult fiction. So this book is called Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. This was part of my book club, one of my book club books. And what this is about is in a world where superheroes exist, but they're not good. They actually, the more... 
there are more villains than there are heroes in this book and that's because the villains outnumber the heroes and it comes down to the fact that um, a lot of the humans or people who do not have powers really do become the heroes um, which is different you don't see that usually in superhero books it's all the superheroes you know fighting and whatnot but this is full of villains a lot a lot of villains here and what made them villains and why they didn't become good versus becoming evil this is actually the first book in a series um so this is the is the first one steelheart being uh a villain or hero a hero turned villain and um really good writing uh, i enjoyed it it was something different that i had not been used to like i said when you read comics or you know superhero kind of books it's they're superheroes they're great they're they're doing what is just for the humankind and in this it was they're all turned villains so what do you do from there what does society do how do you how do you live and so it was very interesting i really liked that it broke out from the norm um, from what I uh, understand from my book club, the person who uh, recommended this, Brandon Sanderson, has a ton of different books that are um, just as good. I would definitely give this a four stars. There were a few areas where I was a little bit confused on the writing style, so I did give it four stars, but definitely interested in continuing the series. I believe the next um, one is Fire something, Firestarter or Fire or something and then the last one is called Calamity. So i um, excited to kind of get into those and see where the story goes. If you've watched any of my other videos you know how much I love series. So I love seeing where the um, characters go and what happens to them and if they um, develop any more which I'm excited for that. So that is my uh, young adult book that I have read this past year and how I would review that. So you can see I picked books that I liked. Uh, so I, these are either five or four uh, star reviews. Uh, and hopefully as we continue on, I don't have too many threes, twos, or ones because it means that it probably took me a while to get into them and read them through. But um, you'll have that from time to time. Sometimes, especially for me, I have a lot of people who recommend books to me. So in most cases, they are highly rated because they are recommendations. But every once in a while, I will go to the library and I'm the worst, guys the cover to me I know they say don't judge a book by its cover but if the cover is really cool looking I will definitely pick it up and read it and then half the time those ones they're not so good <laughs> so I do sometimes fall into the three two and one um ratings but but that's all I wanted to kind of get through. So you had a good idea before I get into the November wrap up at the end of the month for the books that I'm currently reading. So you had an idea of what kind of books I like, how I rate books, what are my criteria in that, and what I've read in the past so you can kind of get a glimpse of all of that. As you can see behind me, this is only one of four other shelves that I have in my house with books. And it's really full so I might have to spend some time this weekend and reorganize so I might have you guys join me with that so if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe hit that bell so you see when I come through um, on your videos there and like this video give me a comment I'd love to interact uh, it's one of my favorite things talking about books so um, if you comment I would be happy to reply and see where the conversation goes but until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great night and happy reading. Bye!